It's no secret that men have traveled to foreign countries seeking out sex with local women for years. But believe it or not, female sex tourism is growing, and it's oftentimes Western women engaging with men in underdeveloped and poorer countries. So what's driving this behavior? And with the current transactions estimated in the hundreds of thousands of dollars each year, will the reverse gender roles change how we view sex tourism overall? It's all related to poverty. Um, mm -hmm. You know, J Jamaica is one of the poorest countries in the Caribbean. Um, it has, since the 70s, as a form of uh, combating its financial crises, been invited to create tourist resorts, which often um, could be considered to be like sexual Disneylands, uh, where you, you know, you just land, um, have lots of money in your pocket. Um, people come up to you, even though you're fat and ugly, and say, hey, would you like to go out for a drink, madam? And uh, it's, just, it's an easy way to feel appreciated and important and beautiful. And uh, exactly. if, it were, if it weren't there, if there weren't any disparity, economically speaking, it wouldn't be happening. Because you don't see women in New York or London um, pick up men from the sidewalk and take them to dinner and then home to bed. That, don't, that <laughs> happens in Jamaica. Well, you've actually done a documentary about um, sex tourism in Jamaica, which is one of the biggest places where, where that's done. And we actually have a clip of the trailer that we can take a look at right now. Sex tourism, a product of slavery, is not new to the Caribbean. Every year, over 80,000 middle-aged women flock to Jamaica to get their groove back in search of the big bamboo. They are not necessarily into long-term relationships, but many return regularly to their island boy, who sport Rastafarian-style dreadlocks, bringing money and gifts like jewelry and designer sneakers, a practice called Rent-A-Rasta. But who are the real Rastafari? And how do they feel about being used to market everything Jamaican? One of the lines in that trailer that struck me and I think kind of strikes anyone when we're talking about sex tourism is, is the word groove. And there is a, a comment here from iBoogie399 who says, you are not in how Stella got her groove back part two, ladies. I'm all for fun, but this is extremely risky behavior. You know, this isn't out of, out of a movie. And Michael, when you were working on this documentary, how did, how did these things transpire? How does it actually work? Oh, it's, I'm surprised that we'd be talking about it. It's as simple as going down the beach with the only difference is if, if I'm a 50 year old American male and I go to South Beach, I have to have a nice convertible and a lot of money. If I'm a 50 year old, uh, you know, uh, Western European or American female and uh, I weigh twice my height, uh, I will be approached by relatively good looking younger men uh, on a beach like in Negril or any part of Jamaica for that matter. Um, who would say, hello, madam, uh, how are you? Uh, would you like to chat with me? And you're beautiful, and uh, uh, maybe we can have a drink and so forth. Um, the difference is, as far as I'm concerned, um, it's, it's partially a racial item because in, in Jamaica we consider to be overweight and, uh, and ugly, by our terms, um, a form of wealth. Uh, it's not, uh, poor people are not fat. Um, we have money that we can spend um, by $200 a night in a hotel room, which is about two weeks or three weeks of salary for a Jamaican uh, laborer or a Home Depot employee. He would make $80 a week. Yeah. As a gigolo, I can make this in one evening and potentially have a relationship that will go further and, uh, you know, take care of me for in the long term or even allow me to travel to a Western country and uh, have a economically... Um, you know, it's a, it's it's a, it's it's all it's my gain. I mean, what do I have to give? I only have to give a, a nice vocabulary and some attention to a woman who has all the assets uh, of a Western wealthy citizen, and that's enough inspiration for me. I mean, I'm, I don't want to work for eighty dollars a week.